and uh, shortly we are going to cross over to the floor for continued live proceedings of the House. And so far we look at what has been uh, discussed on the floor of the House. Absolutely. At the moment the House is uh, looking at a question that was posed earlier by Ms. Mabonga who is a member of parliament. He asked the Minister of Tourism, Honorable Sikumba, a question in four parts, whether the government is aware that uh, officers from the Department of National Parks and Wildlife shot and wounded 29 people at uh, Mowele village in full parliamentary constituency on Tuesday, 28th September 2021. If so, why the officers discharged live ammunition on unarmed uh, villagers? Why the action by the officers was uh, lawful? Whether the action by officers was lawful? And if not, what punitive measures have been taken against the airing officers? And so before the break, we had a chairman, North Member of Parliament, asking a follow-up question to the Minister of uh, Tourism. And uh, we also look at what has been discussed on the floor of the House uh, from the time the House started sitting at uh, 09 hours. Of course, the House started with an announcement uh, on the eye clinic facilities that will be set here at uh, National Assembly for the members of Parliament. Thereafter, we had her honor, the vice president, who indicated the business of the house uh, for next week. And um, after that, we had um, a ministerial statement by the Minister of Energy. Absolutely. The Minister of Energy, Honorable Peter Kapala, he did uh, deliver a statement on the status of Zambia's electricity generation. And so, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, be assured that I will give you a snippet of uh, what the statement was about. Uh, when the House uh, actually adjourns. We have three more questions awaiting consideration, understanding order number 74. Currently, the House is considering question 17, understanding order number 76. Yes, Claudette, we have uh, three more, as you said earlier. We have uh, um, a question that is expected to be posed by Matero, member of parliament, and he's uh, uh, specifically posing this question to the Minister of uh, Gov Local Government and Rural Development. And he wants to find out when construction of the Balaston Katuga Road from Mungule to the Great North Road will commence. He also wants to know what the total cost of the project will be and what uh, the time frame for the completion of the project will be. We also expect uh, Mr. Mumba Kantanshi MP to ask the Minister of the Small and Medium Enterprises Development what uh, size of businesses are defined as small and uh, medium enterprises and what strategies will be used to ensure that the objectives of the ministry are achieved. Just now, we take you to the chamber for live proceedings. When business was suspended, the House was considering question number 17 on the order paper asked by the Honorable Member for Mfue, and the Honorable Minister of Tourism had just finished responding to a question asked by the Honorable Member of Chama North. Honorable Member for Pika Central, Thank you so much, Madam Speaker, your usual kindness to, to give me an opportunity to ask you questions is appreciated. And thank you so much, Honorable Minister. The ecological and uh, social uh, economic importance of natural resources to national development cannot be overemphasized, Madam Speaker. And communities mostly living within and around natural resources like here in Impika, Mukungule and Inawada chiefdoms, where animal and human conflict, as well as uh, confrontations with officers, are so rife, must be empowered to manage these natural uh, resources. Madam Speaker, I would like to find out from the Honorable Minister of uh, uh, Tourism and Natural Resources, is he going to implement the CBNRM policy in order to build self-sustaining communities in these areas of national parks. I thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Minister of Tourism. 
Um, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And thank you very much for that valid question. The Honorable Member of Parliament from Pika Central. Um, I appreciate the fact that you do understand that community is very, very key in conservation. And as such, the, the Community Resource Board Management is a policy that obviously my ministry is looking to uh, implement in the shortest possible time. I'd like to make mention also, Madam Speaker, that at the key or at the cornerstone of conservation, the ministry is looking at ways and means on how we're going to engage communities who are going to have what I'd like to call homegrown solutions in conservation. Madam Speaker, I'd like to also make mention that at the point where my ministry will be engaging the community in coming up with these policies, I'd like to make mention that the members of parliament, area members of parliament in those particular game management areas will be included on the list of stakeholders for input in that policy. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable... Yeah, 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 yeah. Honorable Member for Chifugu. Madam Speaker, the people of Chifugu are very much eager to visit Kasaba Bay. So the question they are asking is, uh, there is no good road infrastructure structure leading to Kasaba Bay. At the same time, the airstrip um, needs much attention there. So I want to get an assurance from the honorable member, uh, from the honorable minister of tourism, what he's doing about um, the rehabilitation of the airstrip there and uh, the road leading to Kasaba Bay. At the same time, if there would be any introduction of an airline to upon a uh, renovation of the airstrip to Kasava Bay, so that the people of Chifu can have access there. Honorable member for Chifu, kindly put in a separate question because that question you've asked does not arise as a point of clarification uh, on uh, the question that has been asked by the honorable member for Mfuwe. Honorable member for Nyimba. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity. Um, I think it's, it's um, on a sad note that uh, we keep uh, having same problems in the valley. The happenings in Mfue, Madam Speaker, are very sad. And uh, these are the things which are happening everywhere along the valley of Rwanda. Madam Speaker, um, the solution to these problems is something the minister should engage everyone who are, who are coming from those constituencies uh, along Rwanda. But my question is, is there any plans um, due to these happenings in the, like the things which happened in, in Infoe, is there any plans to engage or come up with uh, any plan to, in, to direct those who are managing the lunches in the Rwanda River, to fence them, to put electric fences, because this is the best solution to stop the killings and the shooting of innocent people. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Minister of Tourism. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Um, thank you very much for that question, Honorable Member for Nyimba. Um, Madam Speaker, the issue of conservation is, is one aspect that each and every one of our citizens should take seriously. Uh, Madam Speaker, wildlife is one of our resources that we have in Zambia, which we pride ourselves as having been one of the tourism attractions for not only our domestic market, but as well as international. Now, we would love to fence most of the game management areas. However, you do realize that certain animals or certain areas are natural habitats for that wildlife. Madam Speaker, my quick fix to that particular concern 
would be a fact of letting the community understand the benefit of having wildlife in, in our protected areas. That in itself, Madam Speaker, is one issue that I have found in the ministry where our communities do not value the, the aspect of having wildlife. Now, you will notice, Madam Speaker, that as a ministry, we will definitely look at life before an animal, and as such, we are looking at opportunities on how we can coexist with the wildlife in these game management areas. So the aspect of having to fence, I would like to call it as a quick fish, but it's not a, a solution uh, in, its, in, its, in its entirety. We will be engaging communities going forward to see how best they could give value to the wildlife that we have in our GMS. I submit, Madam Speaker. Honorable Member for Chitambo. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker and Minister. Thank you for the good answers you are providing. Minister, due to the gruesome manner in which the village of Muire was um, raided by the officers, people are living in fear. And Madam Speaker, just to make the minister know, I share borders with uh, her constituency, so I know the happenings there, and it's too close to me. People are living in fear. So what are you doing as a ministry and government to ensure that peace is restored and people stop sleeping in the bushes, especially the husbands, to, to the people of uh, Moire village? Thank you. The Honorable Minister of Tourism. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I do sympathize with uh, husbands to those wives who are sleeping in the village, for starters. And uh, Madam Speaker, like I mentioned in my statement, this matter is being investigated by the law enforcement agencies and I could safely say, as soon as that investigation is done, Madam Speaker, I will avail myself to this August House to make a ministerial statement, which would definitely indicate, or rather state what measures we will have put in place in those particular areas so that our brothers and sisters do not live uh, in fear. I submit, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Questions for oral answer, understanding order 74. The Honorable Member for Matero. Question 18, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Minister of Local Government and Rural Development. Madam Speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity. The Honorable Member of Parliament for Matero is asking the Minister of Local Government and uh, Rural Development the following questions. At A, when the construction of Ballaston Katuba Road from Mungui Road to the Great North Road will commence. B, when the tot what the total cost of the project is. And C, what the time frame for completion of this project is. Madam Speaker, in response to the question raised by Honorable Miles Sampa, I wish to inform the August House that the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development recently completed the Outer Ring Road connecting Ballaston area to the Great North Road at a place called Six Miles. Not Miles Sampa, but Six Miles. At B, the cost of the works falls within the project and budget of the Lusaka decongestion project, which was pegged at 289 million facility got from the Exim Bank of India. At B, the cost of the work falls within the budget of the Lusaka decongestion project. And at C, the Lusaka decongestion project had a project life of three years, commencing from April 2018 
and the Ballaston Katua Road that the uh, honorable member is concerned about was done in totality in this period. Madam Speaker, thank you. Thank you. Any supplementary questions? Honorable member for Matero. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister, for that question. Indeed, the Katuba Road was done. Uh, the road extends further, the one they call Twikatane uh, Zingarume Road, opens up to Mungui. If it's totally done, everybody coming from the Copper Belt will be able to turn at six miles, go into Matero and Chunga area, and come out in Mungui Road to Chilanga and avoid the traffic into CBD. Uh, minister, this we call it the bottom road, as the one that the UPF government did in southern province. The bottom road, because at the bottom of the city of Lusaka, it's a, an economic lifeline for the city to open up. Uh, I just want us, you to give the people of Matero assurance that uh, it will be prioritized to be checked how far it has gone and ensure that it is indeed fully completed. Thank you. The Honorable Minister of Local Government and Rural Development. Madam Speaker, thank you very much again for the opportunity and thank you, Honorable Member of Parliament for Matero. This road project that was designed to decongest the traffic in Osaka City was in the scope as it was done. What the Honorable Member is um, anticipating for can only be attended to once we are satisfied that the diversion from Linda Tenoff all the way through the Zambia Open University coming to six miles is not sufficient to decongest the roads in Lusaka. Madam Speaker, this road has just been recently done and uh, we have now as a lo uh, local authority supervisor ensure that we ask Lusaka City Council to place enough signage for trucks that are going to Copper Belt and onward to the Congo and to the north, the north northbound traffic, to put it in short, uh, cultured to avoid the central business district. And only when we achieve that shall we know whether or not that diversion is now sufficient to decongest the traffic in Osaka or not. Otherwise, uh, Honorable Member of Parliament for Matero, every end of the running race is the beginning of a, another one. Once we, as we grow the city of Lusaka, should there be need to develop that road that you are speaking about into bituminous standard, we shall cross the bridge when we get there. I thank you. Thank you. Honorable Member for Matero. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for that answer. In the meantime, with the rains coming, the extension of that road already has some potholes and where it wasn't finished. Could you assure the people of Matero that the council uh, and the ministry, in the meantime, will patch those potholes with Barristone before the bituminous, uh, much expensive program comes through? Uh, thank you. The Honorable Minister of Local Government and Rural Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The MP is asking me to make a government assurance, which I'm unable to do at this particular juncture. My advice to the Honorable Member of Parliament is that just a few days ago, I announced, I made a pronouncement about the release of the Constituents Development Fund, which fund he can use to patch up the potholes that he's speaking about for this road. Otherwise, I could not commit the works on this road because I've not seen the budget that we're going to work within in the next coming fiscal year. Thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Solwezi East. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. And thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister for Local Government. Uh, I just want to take advantage of that question. If uh, the road that is uh, in question has been done, um, what really happens to these engineering people, the kind of material that they use for the road markings? You find that within the shortest possible time, 
these road markings are fed off. I don't know really what kind of material is used. Maybe you can uh, give us an assurance that going forward, we need to have better road markings in order to avoid um, invisibility, especially in the night and also during the rain season. Thank you. The Honorable Minister of Local Government and Rural Development. Madam Speaker, there's a question from the Honorable Member of Parliament from Shindamu, Shoezi East. Um, approaches me to be fairly general. I have not been to see the markings on this road myself to give a specific and accurate answer. It therefore would be my intention to ask the, the, the MP to give us time to see exactly what his concern is, following which we can come back to him with a more precise and concise answer. Otherwise, I'll be shooting in the dark. Thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Member Paul for Bahati. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, I uh, want to find out from the Minister if uh, government has plans to work on uh, feeder roads before uh, the rain season. Madam Speaker, I ask this question because uh, uh, certain areas in my constituents uh, will be cut off uh, from the rest of the country, Madam Speaker, if uh, uh, feeder roads are not worked on. Thank you. Honorable Member for Bauhati, that question is too general. It doesn't fall as a supplementary question to the question that has been asked by Honorable Member for Madero. I suggest you, uh, Honorable it's Member. It's different, Madam Speaker. Order. I suggest that the Honorable Member puts in a specific question to the Minister to enable him time to answer that question sufficiently. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, again, I ask this because uh, we've got, we have uh, bad uh, uh, roads in Bahati, especially in a place called uh, Chivinda, and this area, Madam Speaker, will be cut off uh, from the rest of the country if uh, that uh, the feeder road going to Chivinda is not worked on. So I seriously need, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, the Minister to comment Thank you. Honorable member has been sufficiently guided. Can we make progress? The next question. The honorable member for Kantanshi. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Question number 19. The honorable minister of small and medium enterprises development. Madam Speaker, thank you so much. The question from Honorable a Member of Kantanshi, Mr. Mumba, says, what size of business are defined as small and medium enterprises and what strategies will be used to ensure that the objectives of the ministry are achieved. Madam Speaker, the definition for small and medium enterprises is provided in the micro, small and medium enterprise development policy of 2009 follows micro enterprises. A micro enterprise shall be any business enterprise registered with the registrar of companies. One, whose title investment, total investment, excluding land and buildings, shall be up to 8,000 kwacha. Two, whose over 10 shall be annual turnover shall be up to 150,000 kwacha and employing up to 10 persons. Small enterprises. A small enterprise shall be any business 
enterprise registered with the registrar of companies, one, whose, tight, whose total investment, excluding land and building, one, or A, in the case of manufacturing and processing enterprises, shall be between 8,001 and 200,000 kwacha in the plant and machinery. In the case of trading and service providing, enterprises shall be from 8,001 8, to 150,000 kwacha. Two, whose annual turnover shall be between 150,000 and 1 and 300,000 kwacha, and employing between 11 and 49 persons. Medium enterprises. A medium enterprise shall be any business enterprise large than a small enterprise registered with the registrar of companies. One, whose total investment include excluding land and building in the case of manufacturing and processing enterprises shall be between 200,000 and one and 500,000 kwacha in plant and machinery. In the case of trading and service providing, enterprises shall be between 100,000 and 50,000 and one, and 300,000 kwacha. Whose annual turnover shall be between 300,000 and one and 800,000 kwacha, and employing between 51 and 100,000 persons. However, Madam Speaker, while this definition of MSMEs serves as a working basis from the point of view of the government, there is no legal basis to mandate or institutions that work with micro, small, and medium enterprises to ensure these are the categories of businesses they should target. Therefore, this therefore is one of the issues that the ministry plan to address in order to ensure harmonizing approach to MSME development. To maintain the objectives of the ministry that has been tasked with developing SMS, the following strategies will be employed. One, the starting point will be to ensure the conducive regulatory and policy environment in the place to support small and medium enterprises. In that regard, while we acknowledge that though the Minister of Commerce, Trade and Industry, substantial progress has been made to develop a revised MSMI policy, the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise Development will place priority on ensuring that the policy is first aligned to government agenda for SME development and finalize for implementation. The policy will be aimed at creating a vibrant MSME sector by providing guidance and strategy direction on all activities and development efforts related to micro and small medium enterprises. In addition to policy, 
various pieces of registration and related to development of SMS will be strengthened. And in some instances, new registration will need to be developed for one. Given the new mandate to the citizens, citizen the uh, Economic Empowerment Commission as a statutory body under the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise Development, the Citizen Economic Empowerment Act will govern the operations of ECEC. We will need to be reviewed and strengthened in line with this new mandate. Through relevant departments and statutory bodies, the ministry shall implement support measures and programs designed to spur the growth of SMEs. In, part in particular, this support will be classified into two. One, entrepreneur development support aimed at growing the enterprise through such things as provision of market and financial support, businesses linkages, businesses information and business development services, and improving access to operation premises and infrastructure. And two, entrepreneur development support aimed growing the entrepreneur culture and in entrepreneurs and would be entrepreneurs through such things as tailored training to improve innovations, business management and development skills. For partnership with all relevant institutions and bodies in the SME development landscape, including but not limited to relevant line ministries such statutory bodies and quasi-business institutions, associations representing SME interests, civil society organization and development partners. This process will also involve taking stock of various initiatives and programs that are aimed at supporting SME development to ensure the program are well coordinated and measured not to impl implement in silos. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Kafiwe. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. And uh, uh, thank you, Honorable Minister, for those responses. The creation of this ministry has created a lot of excitement among our people who are small-scale entrepreneurs. And I've listened to the strategies that the minister has outlined. But just to be further clear about the financial support that he has alluded to, how will this be if an SMSE now walked into the ministry, what kind of financial support are they likely to get? Maybe not now because of the empty coffers, but come January, February, first quarter of next year, what do we really expect to find when we walk in the ministry in terms of financial support? The Honorable Minister of Small and Medium Enterprises. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I think everyone in the house should know that this is a new ministry. And this ministry has n haven't even been allocated with any finances. We're waiting for the budget. And I'll be able to comment after the budget. Thank you. The Honorable Member from Furira. <laughs> Madam Speaker, thank you very much, and, and also thanks for, 
the member of parliament for Kantanshi for this question. Uh, uh, Madam Speaker, I would like to find out from the minister uh, what strategies they are what strategies they are thinking about to collaborate with the local authorities because small enterprises face a lot of challenges just from operations within the jurisdiction of the local authorities and madam speaker we have seen uh, circulating uh, some memo coming from chingola municipal council which has come up with some charges for mobile money operating boats. Now that is just one example, but it's widespread that uh, the challenges that are faced by small enterprises uh, mainly come from um, the local authorities in terms of uh, where they operate from, the fees and some of the bylaws that make it difficult for small enterprises to flourish. So I'd like to find out uh, further clarity from the minister in terms of the strategies, how are they engaging the local authorities to promote small and medium enterprises? I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, thank the you. Honorable Minister for Small and the Medium Enterprise Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We know as a ministry that you know we even have what is called Tuntemba. I think everyone is aware of that term in this country. We have a package for everyone. And we are in talks with uh, the local authorities that we find a very nice and good um, uh, environment, especially for our people that are trading, especially in, this, in the streets we have a very uh, special arrangement for them, but is not yet conclusive. So after we have done that conclusion, we'll be able to come to the house and indicate to the house. Thank you. The honorable member for Kantanshi. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, honorable minister. Um, indeed, you have a new ministry. Um, I've had difficulties trying to understand the role of citizen economic empowerment and how it will, how your ministry now will operate because both of them will try and uh, improve the SME growth. Um, maybe one thing that the entrepreneurs are least would like to hear from you: what sort of incentives will come with your ministry to try and build these SMEs so that they become the lubricants of our economy as we try to push it out of recession. What are some of the incentives that you have on the table? Thank you. The Honorable Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. SMEs, Madam Speaker, in this country was not given priority. 60-90% in the big economy, they gave serious attention. This new Don government, we are giving it a priority, hence the creation of this ministry. We have a package for them, the SMEs. I will just unlike maybe one or two. First and foremost, we need to have a mindset we need to try and go out and speak to our people, especially the young people and the women, to change their mind, their approach to these small and medium businesses. As a ministry, we will also go and see, look at the potential. After that, we will give them skills. Then after skills we will have established that these are now matured to get into small and medium businesses. Then later on, we will give them something where they could start from and we'll monitor. Thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Mbavala. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. 
I wanted to find out from the Home Minister whether uh, the new packages and incentives will have, will have funding for innovators who are putting something new on the market so that our youths and entrepreneurs in Bavara who are able to produce things that are not available uh, on the market could be able to get funding for those innovations and be able to access the market and become millionaires like their friends in Osaka who are now apologizing for making money from some of the deals they did in the former republic. The Honorable Minister for Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm excited for the Honorable to talk about people living in the rural areas. Rural areas is one of the areas with much attention from this ministry. Yes, the ministry, we will definitely give to the startups, we will give some financial assistance uh, using like the commissions we've talked about, ECEEC, -E through that. But we can only do that after we are certain, after there's examination, there is a thorough examination that these people can be able to carry out that kind of business. Thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Kabwe Central. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, the Honorable Minister for Small and Medium Enterprises. Um, I know that SMEs are the, are the engine to any economy in the country, and the more efforts need to be directed towards uh, this, the, the SMEs. Uh, now, our aim as New Dawn government is to not leave anyone behind. And in such a world, we would want to make sure that we engage all SMEs. Are you going to consider incentives for those that are going to consider clustering? I know because that's the only way that you can include almost everyone. So what incentives will be there for people who consider to cluster, not an operating individual? Thank you. The Honorable Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We are actually encouraging cooperatives. The ministry is encouraging cooperatives. The ministry wants people to come in groupings. And um, we've also attached training and, um, um, you know, checkups, follow-ups on those kind of uh, projects and businesses they would want to carry on. Thank you, the Honorable Member for Chifubu. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. The Ministry of SME was created by the President in order to accord so many Zambians an opportunity to engage in small businesses. Now, we are going to find out that the registration procedure by virtue of the definition the Honorable Minister has given of what a small-sized enterprise, what is an enterprise and small businesses and the medium-sized uh, businesses. They would require uh, a documentation process which takes long and has been very difficult through the Registrar of Companies, PACRA, ZRA and many other issues. My question to the Honorable Minister is, how is your ministry going to assist our youths and women who are targeted as the beneficiaries of this ministry in this registration process so that they can quickly embark on business? The Honorable Minister. I submit. Thank you. The Honorable Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The ministry is there for the youths and the women. That's the emphasis. We will make sure that those with ideas, those with serious, not just theories, you come with something that is workable, 
to the ministry. We will guide and help you to do registration as a ministry. We will not allow registration to take so long because as a ministry and government, we are here to make sure that we improve our economy. Thank you, yeah. Madam Speaker. Thank you, the Honorable Member for Katuba. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, no doubt uh, uh, this ministry will turn around the fortunes of this country if well handled. It will be basically the future of employment and wealth creation. My worry, Madam Speaker, is uh, many of the times, more especially the small business enterprises, maybe the medium ones will have already crossed. Many of the time when we give these uh, assistance, we don't incubate them. My question to the minister is, will the ministry put up business incubation uh, sort of uh, inst institution to ensure that before they are wind, more especially the small enterprises, before they are wind, they are put into some incubation so that they are wind after they have learned the art of wealth creation and management of business. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Honorable Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I think I've talked about skill training. We have attached very serious skill training. And when we say skill training, we want our small and medium, especially he's talked about the micro, probably micro uh, inter uh, enterprises. We would like to incubate them, send them to some training uh, schools. We are in talks with um, the mines. We used to have those uh, uh, trade uh, schools. We want to see if we can work with the, min the Minister of Mines and revamp those institutions so that the startups who may not understand the concept of business could go through there. Madam Speaker, I would like to give an example just to light one, one thing in this house. Um, we have a problem in this country, Madam Speaker. For you to get a serious or a well-trained plumber, coded welder, it's a very big problem in this country. So this ministry has attacked very a serious and important role to make sure that our startups are taken for training. There's a gap between an engineer and the artisans in this country. Madam Speaker. Thank you. Uh, the Honorable Member for Bonamukubwa. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for allowing me to ask a question uh, on behalf of people of Bonamukubwa. Uh, thank you, Minister, for, for SMEs uh, and development. Uh, Minister, the major issue uh, with uh, SMEs uh, not taking uh, away that uh, every economy is thrived by SMEs. Uh, the issue of funding is very paramount for them to engage into various uh, activities of trading. Uh, what uh, measures have you put in place to ensure uh, that uh, these SMEs can, can, can access the needed funding as well as we look of issues of off-takers. If they produce something, will there be people to buy it? Because we've seen uh, these SMEs, SMEs produce some things, but they're not sold. So let's look at the funding and the off-taker so that it's a win-win situation. Please just highlight on that, uh, Honorable Minister. I thank you. The Honorable Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yes, funding, it's, uh, it's everywhere. It's a problem everywhere. But as I said, the budget is not yet out. I will comment on that. But market for them that might have problems, that's why this ministry is there. We will bisect everything, and the startups should not worry. The ministry is there for them. We'll make sure that we we'll look for the markets for every aspect of whatever they would want to engage in. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Nalolo. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Minister. Congratulations on your appointment. Um, my question is that uh, you would look over the years, the uh, successive governments in this country have had SME agendas, but the biggest failure has been politicizing the process. For access to finance, the criteria has always been politicized. That is why the Youth Development Fund, CEC funds, you cannot have traceability of the success stories of these uh, SMEs. Now, Minister, I would like to know how you prevent this, because uh, your ministry has the great opportunity to empower the youth and the women who are actually the majority of the people that elected the New Dawn government. How will this process of access to basic finance, to value addition skills training, be depoliticized? Because obviously, this ministry is not for a certain political party, or in short, the UPND members, but it is for all Zambians, non-political, and just as a holistic approach. Thank you, Madam Speaker, through you. I Thank submit. you. The Honorable Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I think he, from the word go, our manifesto has said it all. We are not bringing in politics. This ministry is for everyone. I think the president has mentioned and has said it very clear. Any agenda to develop our nation, we don't want anything to do with politics. So all are welcome for empowerment. We don't want to be like the previous administration where unless you were a part of a certain political party, then you got empowerment. Yeah. This ministry is for everyone, whether you are UPND, you are PF, with a very good project that will bring employment to our people. You are welcome. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, the Honorable Member for Magoe. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I just want to find out uh, from the Honorable Minister of Small and Medium Enterprises, is uh, it in his agenda or the ministry's agenda that um, the majority of the people that are being talked to in this ministry are youths? Having said that, we have youths that are still at secondary schools are they trying also to incorporate entrepreneur training or, or business training at an early stage so that we can create youths that are going to have a business mindset? I want to seek his clarity on that one. Madam Speaker, thank you. Thank you, the Honorable Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. My ministry is in talks with uh, the Ministry of Education and once we've concluded the talks, we'll be able to come to the house. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Lukasha. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Just to thank the Minister for the eloquent statement that's been put on the floor of the house. Mine is just to find out 
usually small scale businesses are choked by taxes and they don't take off when they're commenced. Is there an incentive that has been embodied in the structure of these small scale enterprises to make them thrive from the beginning? Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you for that question. Yes, in the beginning, most of small and medium entrepreneurs, they don't take off, especially the micro, they don't take off. It's the approach at times. That's why I said, as a ministry, we are, look, we are also working at the mindset. We want to teach our people how to start. We need to teach our people how to start a business. After that person has been taught, then it will be clear to the ministry that this one is ready. And then we we'll give them incentives and they will start. In the next few years, you will see what will happen in this country. Thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Kanyama. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mine is, is a short one to the Minister. Honorable Minister, you agree with me that uh, over the years now, uh, these SMEs have been the major contributors uh, to the uh, growth of the Zambian economy. Why am I saying so? Uh, you agree with me that uh, these people at no time have they been given any form of incentive, meaning where tax issues are concerned, they have been uh, uh, squeezed from all angles compared to uh, these major companies who at some point will be given some tax break where they can stabilize and uh, you know put their business in order, whereas these small scale business uh, 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 people are uh, never availed with such a you know, uh, tax break. So my question is uh, that, what is it that you have put in place to ensure that these SMEs are given some boost of some kind so that their businesses are done without much constraint in the, uh, the, the issue of funding. I thank you. The Honorable Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, it's not very clear what he has, um, but if I got him right, he touched tax and he also talked about incentives, funding. But I think I've said it all in the beginning. For the tax, we, I said it when I was answering the question from the honorable member here, that we'll make sure that we come up with, with a neighboring environment where every startup is catered for. We don't want anything that will end our people not to do business. Those with potential, we don't want that. The government will make sure that with your potential coming forward to this ministry, we will make sure that you succeed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Itesh. Itesh. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Minister. Uh, I also strongly agree that the SME uh, sector, I think it will be the cornerstone of this country's prosperity. Now, I want to find out from the minister whether we are also thinking about coming up with a very robust funding strategy so that we don't just entirely depend on the national treasury, which for now is not very uh, okay in terms of funding interventions that are going to meet the needs of these young people, especially who are in this kind of a business. And I'm asking to say, will the funding strategy be able to source funds for these interventions from both the traditional and the non-traditional sources, like philanthropists, humanitarians, different kind of donors, so that we enlarge the basket 
that is going to support these interventions in this sector. Thank you. The Honorable Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The approach for the new Don government is totally d different from, uh, you know, other uh, uh, the past ad uh, administration. We have a very good strategic way of supporting the SMEs. We will make sure that the funding is there. We are in talks with other financial institutions. And for sure, Madam Speaker, we will try by all means to make sure that with, of course, Treasury, to make sure that the funding is made for our, for our people who are in, involved in businesses. Thank you. Thank you. The next question, the Honorable Member for Mwenilunga. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Question number 20. The Honorable Minister of Defense. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Um, Honorable Member for Mwenilunga, Mr. Samakai poses a question as follows from the Ministry of uh, Health. A, when the construction of a clinic in uh, Mupulu, Mupulumba area in Chief in Tambuz, Chiefdom in Mwenilunga district will commence? B, what the cause of the delay in commencing the project is? C, when an ambulance will be procured for Chisengi Sengi Clinic in Senior Chief Sailunga's Chief Dom. And finally, in D, what the cause of the delay in the procurement in procuring the ambulance is. The answers from the Ministry of Health to the Honorable Member are as follows. Under A, Madam Speaker, government has no immediate plans to construct a clinic at Mupulumba in Chief in Tambuz Chief Dome in Moilunga District. The House may wish to note that under construction of the 650 health posts countrywide, government has already constructed a health post in Chief Kanyama's Chief Dome. The health post is called Ntambu Sachitolo, which is servicing the Ntambu Chief Dome. Under B, what the causes of the delay in commencing the project is, the answer is as follows. Madam Speaker, as stated earlier and above, government has no immediate plans to construct a clinic in the chief dome. And therefore, uh, there is literally no delay, given that there is no plan to construct one such clinic. Under C, when an ambulance basically will be procured for Chisengi Sengi Clinic, under the senior chief Sailunga's chief dome, the answer, Madam Speaker, is government has no immediate plans to procure an ambulance for Chisengi Sengi Clinic in senior chief Sailunga's area. The House again may wish to note that the cost associated with procurement and operation of ambulance services is substantial. Government policy is that ambulances should be placed at zonal health facilities or district health office to service a specified number of health centers and health posts within a catchment area. This approach is cost effective. So you have one servicing several clinics 
oral health pulse. The last one is D, what the cause of the delay in procuring, procuring the ambulance is. Well, Madam Speaker, as indicated above, again, government has no immediate plans to procure an, an ambulance for the clinic. Uh, and therefore, uh, this question uh, does not apply. Madam Speaker, I would like to thank you. Thank you. Honorable Member for Mwenelongo. Uh, thank you very much, um, Madam Speaker. Thank you, uh, Minister, for the answers that you have uh, provided. Um, Honorable Speaker, the, the clinic that the Minister is talking about in, uh, uh, in Tambu Sachitoru is not in Tambu Chiefdom. It's in senior chief Kanongesha. That is where the government has constructed a clinic. The clinic that I referred to is supposed to be built in chief in Tambu which is to the southern part of uh, Mwinirunga. The other one is in the uh, western part of, uh, of Mwinirunga. Madam Speaker, this clinic was unsolicited. This clinic was a promise from government, and it therefore forms part of the government assurances. I'm now getting shocked with a U-turn from government on the promise that they made to the people of uh, Mwinirunga and the people of Mumpurumba in Chief uh, in Tambo in particular. Why the U turn, Mr. Minister? Thank you, the Honorable Minister of Defense. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Madam, Madam Speaker, uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Samakai, for the supplementary uh, question and clarification thereof as to the location of these two clinics. Um, Madam Speaker, whereas government is an ongoing venture and uh, we take responsibility for some of the promises that our colleagues now in opposition were making mainly because of the need to hold electoral votes which is seriously unfortunate uh, because people's feelings should not be played around with, especially vis-a-vis -vis the establishment of health facilities, which we all need. However, uh, in light of the information, Madam Speaker, that the Honorable Member has highlighted in terms of promises and uh, government assurance. You will allow us, Madam uh, Speaker, uh, to look into, into this issue, establish it, and if possible, I would like to invite the Honorable Member of Parliament for Mwinilunga to liaise with our technical team, the Ministry, so that we can establish as to um, the validity of this, this promise. Nevertheless, the standing policy of the New Dawn government is simple and straightforward. We would like to reach as many people, as many citizens as possible with 
our health facilities, and if it's possible, within five kilometers. Given this policy, uh, Madam Speaker, I hope I give comfort to the Member of Parliament in terms of looking at his request. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Minilong. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, um, Madam Speaker. Uh, I think arising from the last statement from the, from the Minister, I uh, would be able to visit uh, his ministry, and the same promise goes with the, with the ambulance. So I'll take up the two issues uh, together and visit the Ministry of, of Health. I thank you. Thank you. Any further supplementary questions? Any further supplementary questions? The Honorable um, Government Chief Whip, adjournment. Madam Speaker. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I forgot there were maiden speeches. Um, Honorable members wishing to make the maiden speeches, if there any. Honorable member for Mwense. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to deliver my maiden speech. Madam Speaker, I want to thank uh, God, God Almighty, and at the same time the party, the Patriot Front Party, which gave me an opportunity for the third time to contest my parliamentary seat in Mwense Constituents. I was not the only contestant. But I'm grateful that the party chose a candidate who also God thought was the right candidate. Madam Speaker, I want to thank my family, my wife and my kids who have been with me on this political journey for the last 10 years. I too want to thank President Edgar Chagualungu who gave me an opportunity to serve in his government for almost nine years. That was not the easiest. I want to thank the people of Mwense constituents, starting all the way from the president, Dr. Edgar Chagualungu, the members of the Central Committee, the provincial leadership, the district leadership, the consensus leadership in Mwense, who I have worked with for the last 10 years, Madam Speaker. My election on the 12th of August, Madam Speaker, was not because I was the best candidate simply because over the last 10 years, I and the people of Mwense constituents, we have developed a bond. And this bond has been based on the development. And this is why, Madam Speaker, it's very difficult for anybody to go in Mwense and contest. Because I've developed the constituents. This is where the constituents, which the second president of the Republic of Zambia came from. And I inherited everything. And uh, Madam Speaker, I want to assure the people of Mwense constituents that the trust and the confidence have shown in me over the last 10 years and going into this tenure, I do not take it for granted. I want to assure them that we will continue to work with a new Don government in strengthening the developmental bond that we have created together over, over time. Madam Speaker, the commitments that I made to the people of Mwense constituents, and I will never delegate those commitments, just as we request our colleagues, the UPND, also on the many commitments they made to ensure that they deliver them. I told the people of Mwense constituents that we'll be able to complete all the outstanding projects, and I look forward to working with all the ministers in the new Don government, especially the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, to complete our market, to complete our urban township roads, our feeder roads, I work with the Minister of Energy to complete all the glass starch houses that we have been electrifying through the Rural, rural uh, Electrification Authority. 
I work with the Minister of Water, and I want to invite you, my, Madam Speaker, to my constituents, because I did invite the former Minister, Honorable Nakachinda, to come and see how I have done 16 piped water projects. That was not based on government central funding, because I hear some of the MPs co complaining. That was done using equalization and CDF, 16 piped water projects. Probably it is the constituents in the Republic of Zambia with the most piped water projects. I never used to see any government central funding. So I want to invite the minister and who was answering questions, was it yesterday, very eloquent and very maturely to come and visit how I've been able to deliver 16 water projects at very minimal cost. Probably can learn from there and be able to drive the ministry as we look to water and sanitation uh, development. But I'm speaker, I also on behalf of the people of Monsa Consuels, I want to commit that I'll work with the new Don government in ensuring that the transformation of the economy that President Lungu had started probably it may not be seen. By transforming the companies that were privatized during the MMD, one of them was Monush Banana Scheme. Madam Speaker, we used to import bananas from South Africa. Today, my constituents host a company that was privatized, abandoned, but President Lungu revitalized it. Today, we have started selling bananas, and most of the bananas we'll be buying now in your supermarkets will be coming from Monsa constituents. I therefore look forward to working with the Minister for Small and Medium Enterprises and your counterpart in the Minister of Commerce. We need to begin to export these bananas into Congo. We need to use Monush Banana Scheme through IDC and migrate it from a medium enterprise, maybe to a large-scale enterprise, and create jobs and wealth for our people. Our people can no longer continue living in poverty, Madam Speaker. But as long as you are able not to abandon or have a mentality of abandoning everything that the PF government did, then you'll be able to score because that is a hanging fruit, Monish Banana Scheme, if you come there. Bananas being, you know, trucks and trucks are here, are going there to buy the bananas. So, Madam Speaker, that is my commitment that we need to work with the new government so that that company, because their thrust, their strategic thrust is to create jobs, create wealth for the people. Monish Banana Scheme is a hanging fruit for them. But I'm speaker too, I want to work with my colleague, again, the Minister of Small and Medium Enterprises, because that's where CEC falls. We have got a Subiro Palm Oil Processing Plant, which has got a few teething problems because they got a loan. Minister, I want to work with you to ensure that the factory has already been set. It's just a question of some small additional funding which is required so that we are able to source the parts that are remaining so that we can begin to buy you know, palm oil from all the farmers in that particular in the northern region for the processing of palm. And again, Congo, the Minister of Commerce, is a, is a larger market so that we begin to export, um, uh, you know, the palm oil into, into, into Congo. So, Madam Speaker, in a nutshell, I want to ensure that uh, we will work with our colleagues. We've given them the button of leadership. We'll continue to work with them to ensure that our commitments that we made as MPs uh, Madam Speaker, uh, fulfilled. Again, to our colleagues, Madam Speaker, they made commitments on the campaign trail. Our job now as um, backbenchers, Madam Speaker, and I, I believe you provide us an opportunity because this chamber is for speaking. You provide us an opportunity to ensure that the new government is held accountable, being held accountable, Madam Speaker, in a professional, technical, and objective manner. This should be our role here as a backbencher, because we are partners in development. And therefore, Madam Speaker, on behalf of the people of Mwense Consuels, I look forward to working with the new Don government to ensuring that the free education that they made commitment to, the 50 kwacha per bag of milli meal, the 250 kwacha for, for a bag of, um, for a bag of uh, uh, fertilizer, the recruitment of our trained teachers and medical staff is fulfilled. We will not, Madam Speaker, come here just to oppose for the sake of opposing. Where they bring good programs, we'll be able to support them. But where we need to provide objective and professional checks and balances to them, Madam Speaker, we'll do that. On behalf of the people of Monster Consuels, Madam Speaker, and oh my God, I want to thank him for giving me this opportunity to be in this chamber for the third time. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Any more maiden speeches? The Honorable Government Chief Whip, adjournment.
Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the House do now adjourn. The question is that the House now adjourn. Any debate? Any objection? The question is agreed to. The House is now adjourned. On Tuesday at 14.30 uh, hours and just about now we'll have a recap of uh, business that has been transacted on the floor of the house uh, starting at uh, 09 hours. Uh, business of the house today started with uh, an announcement uh, on the use of um, the eye clinic facility that has been set up at uh, the National Assembly and therefore the Honourable Madam Speaker informed the house that Dr. Ag Agawao Eye Clinic Hospital had been granted permission to conduct the free, a free comprehensive eye, eye screening exercise for members of parliament and staff. The exercise will include uh, blood pressure and uh, random blood mon sugar monitoring um, and aims at promoting eye health through early detection and the treatment of uh, common eye disorders such as corneal scarring, refractive uh, errors, cataract, glaucoma and hypertensive and uh, diabetic disorders that affect the eye. Madam Speaker did further say that the screening exercise will take place from Monday 11th to Friday 15th October 2021 in the committee room number five parliament buildings from 09 hours to 16 hours on each day except during a lunch break from 13 to 14 hours. Adherence to the five golden rules of COVID-19 prevention will be observed during the exercise. And she did say that interested honorable uh, members are encouraged to find time and visit the screening room. And after that announcement, uh, her honor, the vice president, actually did indicate a business that will be considered on the floor of the house uh, starting next week, Tuesday, 12th October to Friday, 15th October, 2021. After her honor, the vice president, indicating business for next week, this was followed by her honor, the vice president's uh, question time. And we had a number of members of parliament that made the follow-up questions, or rather that posed the questions to her honor, the vice president, concerning various issues that affect the country. Thereafter, Madam Speaker did permit uh, the Minister of uh, Energy, Honorable Peter Kapala, to render a ministerial statement on the status of Zambia's electricity generation. And uh, in the statement, uh, Mr. Kapala indicated that uh, electricity remains a major source of energy in Zambia. He said that uh, this, um, the electricity supply uh, industry, ESI in Zambia, comprises of power generation plants owned and operated by Zesco Limited, the national electricity utility company. He, sta he said that uh, power generation plants owned and operated by independent uh, uh, power product pro pro producers